So life had just nearly died, which sucked, but how did it recover? Now in the last instalment, which was the Ordovician, we ended things off with roughly 80% of all life dying off, which was an extinction event actually worse than what killed off the non-avian dinosaurs. So let's take a look at the aftermath and how life clapped back leading to some incredibly important events in Earth's history. So the next period that we're now in is known as the Silurian, which started around 443.8 million years ago. First identified in Wales in the 1830s by Roderick Murchison, many rock layers were attributed to Silurian, which were actually later found to be Ordovician. In fact, the debates over this got so heavy that it ended the friendship of Murchison and fellow researcher Adam Sedgwick. Oh good! More rock-related fights. Anyway, like a kitchen the morning after a heavy party, the ocean was a mess, littered with bodies whose living status was questionable. I've been to some crazy parties, alright? But these waters were now starting to warm after the previous ice age, with ice caps disappearing and sea levels rising. Along with this, the continents of Laurentia, Baltica and Avalonia had begun to drift together and form Euramerica, with the collision creating the Caledonian Orogeny, again that's Orogeny with an O, which is a series of mountain belts stretching from America and all throughout Europe. So, with sea levels and temperatures rising, along with the land masses moving around and creating diverse new environments, what little life was left was taking full advantage of it and began diversifying rapidly again. Now first, let's take a look at the vertebrates. Now, as stated before, the very first fish had likely already begun to develop jaws by repurposing a couple of gills by the end of the Ordovician, but the earliest fossil to show this off is from the Silurian, with a group being known as Placoderms. In fact, the Silurian marked the point in history when fish really started picking up the pace, with these Placoderms, or armoured fish, becoming incredibly important in the next instalment, which is the Devonian. Maybe subscribe so you don't miss it. Next, we'll take a look at another group that were making massive strides at this time, which is of course the plants. Now, flora was actually the first group of life that had conquered the land during the previous period, but these were very primitive, non-vascular plants. Come the Silurian, however, they had now developed as much more complex vascular plants, with the earliest known genera being Cooksonia and Baragwanathia, with the latter having some of the very first leaves. Now this development of land plants actually began the stage setting for other groups, slowly but surely filling the air with oxygen. It wasn't just the plants. Other groups had also decided that it wasn't better down where it's wetter, including forms of fungi and the very first fully terrestrial creepy crawlies. In fact, by the mid Silurian, these guys were already predating with some of the first terrestrial animals including millipedes, scorpions and trigonotarbids, which can be best described as incredibly spider-like arachnids but not quite spiders. There you go, if you need a copyright free superhero, Trigonotarbid man. So there were finally some animals that were doing the whole manosphere proud and choosing to breathe air and fish were finally starting what would soon become their takeover of the seas. But it wasn't exactly a smooth ride. Now, isotopic analysis shows that the atmosphere actually had more fluctuations than any other period in Earth's history, with carbon cycles going up and down. Coinciding with these fluctuations were the Erevacan, Mold and Low events which are a series of minor extinction events, mostly affecting corals, brachiopods and trilobites. As for what caused them? Well, some ideas of minor glaciation events has been thrown around, 
but the current leading theory on this is... I don't know. Either way, just 24.6 million years after it started, the Silurian came to an end. In fact, this was the shortest period in the geological timeline, and due to its late addition to that timeline, this didn't actually end with any major extinction event. It was short and sweet, but it certainly packed a punch in terms of life, starting off a terrestrial revolution that hit its peak during the Devonian, but I'm not spoiling that for you just yet. So if you enjoyed this video and felt you learned something new, feel free to leave a like and a comment because I really like reading through them and always find it really interesting to see what you guys have to say. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because it would mean a hell of a lot to me. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.